Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and welcome back to another video on mathematics of matriculation mathematics for matriculation first semester in the previous video we already go into the first part of the second chapter that is solving equations uh, involving search indices and logarithm so for this video we're going to go into the second part of the chapter that is solving inequalities okay so actually there are a few things that we are going to discuss then i i will work the this chapter into i think three or four parts i think three three parts that uh, discuss the subtopic of inequalities because we actually we are when we talk about inequalities in our syllabus we are going to solve three kinds of inequalities. The first kind is linear inequalities. And then this kind of inequalities we will discuss we will be discussed in this video. The second part is quadratic inequalities. When, we, when I say quadratic inequalities, that it has the in, it, it, it it refers to the inequalities that has the equal, the quadratic form, and the last kind of inequalities that we we, we will dealing in the syllabus is variational inequalities or inequalities that has the form of ratio. Okay, so these are the three kinds of inequalities. That we will dealing in this syllabus. But before we go into solving these inequalities, these kinds of inequalities, first we need to know, or we need to, we need to know the properties that relates inequalities. I think I already discussed the a little bit about properties of inequalities in the my in the. I think in I didn't I don't remember which video, but. Uh, the videos that when I discuss the first chapter, okay, maybe some of you are wondering why I already discuss that kind, of, these topics, but actually I don't really discuss deeply because, okay, the first the first reason is, I uh, no no the reason is, I at that time I'm using different books, at that time I'm using different books, I'm using that time I use the books that I have used during my foundation times, during my foundations. And we have different, and that book is different from the book that you are using in the matriculation. Okay. So that's why I kind of mix the, 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 some of the, of the videos about, matric, about uh, mathematics for matriculation are a little bit messed up. Mixed up. Okay. Because I'm using different books back then. So now I'm using the books for matriculation. So, so I will talk using the syllabus that already arranged in the book okay so now we go before we can solve the inequalities we need to know properties of inequalities so we go into properties of inequalities properties of in Equalities. Properties of inequalities. Okay, so we begin with if sorry, if A is greater than B. Okay. So when we say about inequalities, we are not referring to the symbol. No, no, no. We are not. We are not going to refer this symbol. We are going to refer four kinds of symbols. We have greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and great, less than or equal to. So I already discussed what is the meaning of these four signs in the. I don't remember which video. So I'm. I don't think that I don't think that I will need to emphasize the meanings of these symbols again okay so we go directly into the properties of inequalities so let's say we have if sorry if a is greater than b 
then then we have the following properties first a plus c is greater than b plus c for every c that are greater that is greater than zero okay so we have the first property okay we start with a greater than b okay so if we had if we add another constant at both sides of the inequalities it does not change the sign of inequality okay the same goes to when we have where we minus both sides with a constant so addition or subtraction with a constant on both sides of the inequalities does not change the sign of the inequalities okay that's the first thing okay second a multiply c greater than b multiply c if c greater than zero okay if c is greater than zero okay so we have the second property we have if we if we multiply both sides of an of the inequality with a constant with the constant is greater than zero it also does not change the sign of inequality for example let's say we have let's say we have a equals to 2 eh, sorry a equals to 4 b equals to 3 okay we introduce c equals to 5 okay a is greater, 4 is greater than 3 of course okay so if we multiply 5 with a and a and b so what we'll have here is a multiply c is 20 b multiply c is 15 so 20 is greater than 15 okay that's why we say that if 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 the constant is greater than 0 the multiplication of both sides of the inequality with that constant does not change the the inequality, the inequality sign okay however however a multiply c is less than b multiply c if c is less than zero so now if we have c is less than zero and we multiply it with both sides of the inequality it will change the sign of the inequality Okay, for example, let's say I change C here with 5, negative 5. So, AC, so 4 multiply negative 15 is, sorry, 4 multiply negative 5 is negative 20. And B multiply C, 3 multiply negative 15 is negative, and so 3 multiply negative 5 is negative 15. So, obviously, negative 20 is less than negative 15. Correct? Right, am I right? Negative 20 is less than negative 15. That's why if we have C is less than 0 and we multiply C with both sides of the inequality, that it will change the, or the, the sign of the inequality from less from greater than to less than. Okay. And then we have last property okay 1 over a less is less than 1 over b given that a and b are not equal to 0 oh, obviously this condition is this 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 condition is obvious because if we have a and b is equal to 0 1 divided by 0 is undefined 1 divided by 0 is undefined so we cannot have this property if we if we let a and b equal to zero okay okay so the inverse of the number one over a is less than one over b okay if we try here again so we have one over four and one over five one over four is equals to zero point two five okay 
0 0.25 but but here b here is okay 0 0.2 okay maybe you will some of you were wondering why 1 over a is less than 1 over b okay we should not see the value here as it is we should see it <laughs> we should see it okay we should see it oh maybe this book is wrong wait 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 oh sorry uh, I use 3 right sorry 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 uh, 1 over 4 and 1 over 3 ok 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 1 over 3 is 1.3333333 and so on ok is it this ok sorry sorry I make a mistake before ok so obviously 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 3 ok obviously this, this is so obvious if we change if we change the ratio into the percent uh, into the into the decimal form that it will be obvious okay so this this is the so these are the four properties related to inequality so you should be familiar with this property okay and it does not change if we have greater than or equal to so it doesn't change anything just the same right okay okay so that's uh that's that's uh about properties related to inequalities okay so i think okay this related to number one Okay, this is related to number 2 and 3. Okay. Okay, another thing before we go to linear inequalities. Okay, in inequality, any term can be transposed from one side to, another, uh, to the other side if its signs is changed. Okay, this, this means this is the same what we do in algebra on on equal sign on, on on equation okay we can move any any term from one side to other side okay from one side to other side okay if we can if we if okay but because here we are related to to inequality so something must be changed if we move any terms okay let's say for example let's say for example we have we have 8 minus 3x greater than x greater than x okay so if let's say we want to move the term sorry let's say we want to move the term negative 3x to the right okay so what will happen is so what will happen is when we move Okay, when we move, okay, when we move, okay, we, we change from negative sign to positive sign. If we move from one side to other side, the same goes when we move a positive term from one side to other side, it will change from positive to negative. That's obvious. That is very obvious. Okay, so let's say we have 8 greater than 4x. Okay, greater than 4x means means that we have x a, a, 2 is greater than x. Or we can change the okay here if we want to interchange interchange the inter, or interpose or we want to transpose one side to other, uh, one term to other side and other, uh, one term from other side to the other to the side. Okay, here we will change the sign of equality. Here, what we this we, we can we we say that we can transpose any term from one side to the other, but as long as we change the sign, as long as we change the sign. Okay. All right. So we go into 
linear inequalities linear in equalities okay so a linear in okay because we say about linear <laughs> we say about linear okay this okay when we say about linear means that means that the unknown has the maximum power of one the power eh, the power of the unknown let's say we have the unknown x okay the power of the unknown in linear inequalities or linear equation, the same goes to equation, the maximum power of the unknown must be 1. It cannot for, it cannot be on 1. Because if it's beyond 1, it will not become linear. It will become quadratic, cubic and so on. So when we say about linear, the, un, the maximum power of unknown must be only 1. The maximum power of the unknown only 1. Okay. So we have, okay, okay, linear inequalities will have the following, either one of the four, four forms. Okay, we have ax plus b greater than, greater than zero, ax greater plus b greater than or equal to zero, ax plus b less than zero, and ax plus b less than or greater than zero. Eh, less than or greater than zero. Okay, correct. Okay. So, to solve, okay, to solve this kind of inequalities, we are just using the properties of inequalities we have discussed before. Okay. So, let's take some example. Let's take some example. Example, solve, solve, one, five x minus four, less than or equal to six. Okay. So, okay. So to solve this equation. The strategy they can use is we left only x we, we left the terms that has uh, that has the unknown at one side. Okay, if that side has other that had okay, okay sorry if that side has other terms uh, uh, sorry sorry if that te, uh, if that side has terms other than the unknown we move that terms to one to other sides. Okay, for example we have the left hand side we have. 5x which is the unknown and the negative 4 so we want to make sure that only 5x is left on the left hand side so what we can do is we move negative 4 to the right okay what we will have here is 5x less than or equals to 6 plus 4 which is 10 and then we have x okay so now we can we can divide both sides with 5 so that left hand side will have x okay so 5x divided by 5 equals to x and then the right hand side 10 divided by 5 is equals to 2 so now we have our answer is x uh, less than or equal to 2 that will satisfy this equation. Okay. You can leave the answer like this. Or also, you can leave the answer in interval form. We have uh, from negative infinity to 2. Okay. Alright, second example. Second example is 5x plus 7 greater than 2x plus 1. Okay, so now we have both sides has the unknown term and also uh, constant. 
Okay, so we can do is we we group together terms that has the same kind at one side. Okay, for example, we can bring two x from the right from right to the left, and then we bring seven from left to the right. Okay, so what we'll have here is five x minus two x. Okay, greater than one. Minus 7. Okay, so we'll have 3x greater than negative 6. Okay, so we'll have the answer x greater than negative 2. Or, or negative 2 to infinity e. Alright, the third example the third example is we have 2x plus 1 ok it's greater than negative 5 uh, it's greater than or equal to negative 5 but less than or equal to 3 ok alright so what we can do here what we can do ok Okay. Oh, plus one, sorry. Okay, since uh, we have two x plus one in the middle of the, in the middle. Okay, so we should, first thing, we should move the plus one, okay, to both sides. How? Okay, because it's plus one. So it, when we move, it will become negative one, right? Okay, so we, ha we will have negative five minus one. Okay, 2x and then 3, neg 3 minus 1. So we'll have negative 6, 2x, 2. And then we have, we divide both, okay, we divide all terms with 2. So we will have x is between or equals to negative 3 and 1 or we can leave the answer as x is between uh, negative 3 and 1 ok last example Last example, we have negative 8 less than or equal to 1 minus 3x less than or equal to 7. Oh, sorry, less than 7. Okay. So, now we have 1 minus 3x. So, now the x has the negative sign. Okay, okay. Before we can change the sign, first thing first, we move positive 1 to both side left and right okay so it will become negative 1 so we will have negative 9 negative 9 less than or equal to negative 3 x less than 7 okay so now we can divide all terms with negative 3 so it will become 3 x 7 over 3 ok however since we divide with uh, negative negative 3 ok since we divide with negative number negative 3 we should also, we should also inverse the sign so here we become greater than or equals greater than or equals to here greater than so we rearrange again so we will have Oh, it's, no, it's not, it's not supposed to be 7. 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, yes. No, negative 2 because we divide with negative 5. Okay, sorry. So, we, we rearrange again. So, we'll have 2x3. Okay. Oh, sorry. 
Oh this answer Okay So that's how we solve equations uh, Sorry, how we solve linear inequalities Okay, inshallah in the next video I will show how to solve quadratic inequalities Okay, so see you again on the next video inshallah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh